if Ramen starts like realizing it's five o'clock and he wants to eat, then we'll have to pause. But does he know that uh, they know their 90% time? Ninety percent of the time, Ramen will, it'll be four fifty nine and he'll get up and look at me, and then it it's like weird. Like the clock will go five o'clock and he goes rrr, rrr, like it's Ramen's brilliant. Pino, not so much. See, Wally won't eat. Like he like dis- he is very. Uh, he decides when he's going to do things. Even though I know he wants to jump on the bed, I'll be like, come jump on the bed. Oh, and he's like, because well, you wait. told me to, I'm not going He'll to. He'll wait until I, like, stop look at, looking at him and gets up. Same thing with food. Come on. Well, uh, well like, our water. It's like, you're obviously thirsty. <laughs> that's he's going to so, wait. I feel like that's, wait, is he a Labradoodle? No. Australian Labradoodle. Australian Labradoodle. But, yeah, the doodle. The, the oodle in it, really. Um, They're such shits. They are very particular and very, like, I'll do it when I want. It. I mean, I grew up with Goldens, yeah. so I am partial to Goldens. Are just superior, sweet, and the best. They are. I'll say I it. know you know that because you've had one. Yeah, they are the best. Yeah, but I couldn't deal with the hair. I know. And Wally, I just love. I'm literally obsessed with him because he has his own personality, and it's not sweet. Uh, always sweet like gold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a little feisty, a little and, sass I, in and there. I love it. Yeah, you're like. Are you, did you come from me? Yes. Yeah. I get that. Ramen has a bit of sass in him. He's like, I don't know. How to, Ramen is just very particular and sassy, but also so sweet and yeah. very in tune with all of my emotions. Like, so knows when you need just like love. And, and by the way, we're recording. We're just going. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Um, but yeah, he knows. He knows when I need love. He knows when I need um space he knows when i'm like having anxiety he's so it's crazy and i feel like he takes on all the feelings where this guy's like i'm a potato <laughs> i did a doggy yeah this is robin's like 80th life and this is his first life that's what i think okay yeah that Ugh. makes sense no, um wally uh he he is the cool even my parents who have goldens are like obsessed with wally i mean they, wally's very cute he's very cute but uh he just He's gotten so much better now that he's a year and a half, too. He's just way calmer. And now he's just the star of the show everywhere we go. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I'm like, I really want to find an agent for him. Ooh, little, could, like a doggy model? Like a, yes. Like, I think he could really do it because he can sit and pose on command pretty well. Really? When he decides he's up for it. <laughs> what if there's a treat involved? He doesn't care about a treat. There's a ball involved. Okay, that's Pinot, too. Okay, so ball-motivated so if you just tr- like doesn't if care about set, he could just have a like you know we'll hold perfect. it here, the squeak. Yeah, really. Oh, and then the side profile. Oh yeah, ah! <laughs> I'm obsessed. Shake if you did it one way, if you held it right left, he would probably do his head. Like he does not care about other dogs. <laughs> if there's a ball. Yeah. Do you take him to dog parks? Yes. Okay. But he does not. He'll like sniff other dogs, say hello. They'll want to play with him, and he just like it's like I'd rather not. Yeah, but he's not mean back. He'll let, like, a dog will just, like, be humping him, and he is just still watching the ball. He's, and he'll, like, be like, get off me. But, like, he doesn't get mad. He's like, I don't care. I'm just trying to find the ball. I need to meet Wally. How have I not met him? I know. We have to have them. Yeah, they got to meet. We have a puppy play date. I remember when I went to L.A. with Ramen, um, we got Becca Kufrin's dog together, Becca Tilly's dog, and my dog, and we took him to the dog park, and they were best friends. They really were? Even yes. the tiny one? Even the tiny one. I mean, that dog is three pounds. We went to, what is Percy Warner? Yeah. And there was a hawk that was just like <gasps> watching the dog. No. And of course, like Wally's big, like 50 pounds. Yeah, they take small ones. But I think of little, there's like little three pound dogs. And I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't take that don't to go a dog to Percy park. Warner. Oh my gosh. Because there was a, a, a huge hawk that was definitely like staring a little too long at Wally. I felt very uncomfortable. Yeah. You're like, get the, no. uh-uh. Would you fight a hawk for, for Wally? honestly i know my response would be to just like i would probably be a little frozen i think i would freeze yeah right you're had a beast you no, can do anything you can no, fight a hawk if you want to <laughs> no things like that especially if adam was there i'd be like what do you, you do it we actually had we um went to the movies sunday and we watched that sound of freedom movie which was it's about so i've never um, heard of it it's about uh human trafficking oh wow and very heavy and yeah. then as we're on the way home we watched this car accident happen no and for me 
I just started screaming. Like I, yeah. I screamed, but I immediately started calling 911 and I was like, get out there, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't move, but I'm like, you got to get out there. So you freeze. Um, initially. And then I don't know, I've gone back and forth. Cause then I have like other instances. I'm like, no, like I definitely like have fought, fought through it, but there is this part of me that does kind of have yeah. that moment of like pause That's of what, what is happening. Yeah. And then I, I have I'm to the be worst. like, charge. Oh, so you fr- <laughs> you freeze for just a minute and then you throw yourself and into action. And then I'm like, let's go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, that's, I'm so sorry you had to see that. I've seen a car accident before and it haunts my dreams. It I also horrible. lost a best friend in a car accident and like, oh my God, it just gives me full body, like sick feeling. Yeah, it was horrible. I think Are everybody okay? was okay. okay. But it was really traumatizing oh, to yeah. see and then we couldn't get the car open and oh my oh you were yeah. really in there no, in like it. really in it oh. yeah it was a lot so that was sorry. sunday <laughs> gosh, that was sunday my gosh yeah so uh yeah then the first time to like see one like that it's really hard even it's if you're awful. not i've been in a car accident that but that you've watching been in a, it like a bad one not horrible you've gone through some shit hannah I know. I was talking to my therapist about that today. I'm like, I feel like my brain is um, like a one of those pinball machines. Yeah. And yeah. they're just, I'm trying to keep everything like yeah. in there. And because if something falls through, <laughs> bad I just, day. I just had the sound in my head of, <laughs> um, you know, on Price is Right when you lose. Do, 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 do. That's one. Yeah. That's, that's, we don't want that. We don't want that happen. So we're just trying to juggle all the trauma in there, but we're we have help. Okay. The, yeah. I mean, most important thing you have helped. I know I was doing this prep doc for you. And first of all, usually when people come in here, it's just like such a hot mess. And I always think of you because I'm like, have your book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, God bless this hot mess. And yeah. then I was like, where? See? <gasps> oh, God bless this mess. That's I me. have it right here, everybody. It was so cool. Uh, yeah. Our neighbor, we've met, met him a few times. He's a musician. Yeah. He didn't know anything. He thought it was yeah. just Adam's girlfriend. Right. Like they've hung out. Yeah. He was like, "It's so weird." I saw. I was in the airport, like just walking around, and I see this book, like eye level. I'm like, "Man, that girl looks familiar." And he, he was like, I didn't, "I didn't remember your name." Like he had just met Adam, and he was like, "Oh my god, that's my neighbor." And he's like, "You wrote a book." I'm like, "Awesome." I'm glad it's still like. On in high level in the book. Yeah. 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 Like, perfect. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I see it in the, uh, yeah. the airport everywhere. Yeah, it's that's amazing. really exciting. So while I was doing that, like, I know you, obviously, and we're friends, and we go to dinner, and we talk, but I learned even more about you doing this research for this podcast because I didn't know you survived cancer. Like, what? I mean, yeah, I mean, I had a really, like, crazy scare when I was little. Um, yeah, I got really sick really fast. Yeah. Where I still think it's like a weird medical mystery of like what what caused them to find it because I got my period like really early but just like one time and I was having like really bad stomach cramps with that but then I also was having just like really bad stomach issues yeah. to the point like couldn't go to school, doubled over in pain, couldn't go to the bathroom, like serious and that's, I went to like a gastrologist, they were like you definitely have, I or talking about IBS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely like have something going on there. Yeah. I don't know if this is what's causing it. And it was just, I was just declining in health. Like if you look at nice. pictures of me at that time, like no color in my face, my mom's like, there's something else wrong. And then my primary care doctor was like, we need to like do a full, I guess like MRI. Yeah. And yeah. I had a, uh, encased malignant tumor so okay. but i hate to say it because there's people that have really gone through the battle of cancer and i was very fortunate mm-hmm. that my doctor was able to get out my encased tumor fully if it would have you know burst or something was waited left, longer yeah. it would have it would have been it could have been a lot worse but yeah it was very quick like found out i had it two weeks later having the surgery like wow really didn't go to school much my fifth grade year um but yeah like my parents it was it was on my pancreas or attached to it which is like one of the worst types of yeah. cancers you can have um but I think I was so young 
yeah, I mean, that's so much to go through at 11 years old. And I'm starting to learn more and more the more therapy I do about how much trauma gets trapped in your body from younger ages. Mm -hmm. And like even physical pain or certain aches or sick feelings, like it's trauma that's trapped in there. And if bad things happen to you at young ages, you've gone through so much. Besides therapy, do you do like you lift weights? Does that help you? Yeah, I mean, I also had a stint where like my body literally shut down, like could not walk um, upstairs, like had my neighbor, like we had to go to the emergency room together because I'm like, I can't walk up these stairs. This was like 2021, I think, or like end of 2020. Yeah, maybe end of 2020. Recently. Was this before or after Special Forces? This this was before before Special Forces. And that's why special me doing Special Forces was such a big deal. Yeah. Um, more just for me to mentally like overcome feeling like my body can't do anything. I didn't work out for like a full year. Wow. Um, all I did was like physical therapy. My body was so inflamed, gained more weight, couldn't figure out how to like balance my body. I it felt so out of my body in that like had no control in, in, in any way to, and when I say control, like control to like make myself feel better. Like wow. I was trying all the things and I'm like, did you ever find out what it was? I, I genuinely, yes, there was a lot of other things going on that can have diagnosis. I mean, I was told I had fibromyalgia. I was told yeah. I need to get a nose job because I wasn't getting enough what? oxygen. So if you don't get enough oxygen to your brain, then it can make all these things happen. I was told I mean, like so many things I have mast cell activation syndrome, like high histamine levels that can cause all this. And I'm sure some right. of that, all of that yes. could be true a little bit here. And but there. I also think trauma yeah. can make you and, and not dealing with things can really, your body can just be like, oh, we're yeah. done. Yep. We're, we're, we yeah. need to stop. Pump the brakes. So you're like, so I'm going to go on special forces no. then and get tortured. Wait, no, I went okay. through like serious like physical therapy multiple times a week uh slowly got back into working out uh acupuncture mm. mul- like every week and like reiki yep. did all the weird stuff yep. and actually helped a lot mm-hmm. um obviously therapy yeah uh worked with dr amen that's when I really felt like I started getting more help because is that a therapist or what he is a psychiatrist yeah um but does everything kind of he has like so many like you work with a sleep doctor you work with um a what is it called when you're like functional medicine yeah yes and so she has helped me like help me figure out my digestion and what's going on because I was literally bloated all the time always inflamed these are the only pants that fit me. Like, yeah, like yeah. What I do. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, it was a, a struggle. So, f- started kind of getting everything un- uh, better under control and having more t- tools to know what help, what's helpful, what's not. Going to the OBGYN and being yeah. like, oh, my hormones are way out of whack. Figuring that out. So it was a lot of being in the doctor going getting so many tests done which is stressful in itself just doing all that I was I remember just being like I feel like all I do is try to ask like all I'm doing is like help me and go into another doctor's appointment and still just being like help me (laughs) feeling stressed out going to the doctor having all these internal issues and it's not just one thing it's a bunch of different things Mm -hmm. not seeing any progress and feeling defeated can also do shit to your body. Yes. Or um, I think it's when so many people are saying it's so many different things. It's like, well, h- how do I treat all this? Right. And saying, oh, it's going to take a while for yeah. it to get better. You're yeah. Like, I need so, something now. So you just kept going to all these different things and places and slowly but surely figuring uh, it out? Yeah. And yeah, it's still a journey. I'm not yeah. quite there. When I got the call for special forces, I had just started getting back to um like doing any type of real physical exercise so that must have been pretty scary so when they gave me the call like that because that's mentally physically like and i just got into a place i remember I, I'll, i'll remember when i got that call i was like about to go up my stairs to my apartment there's like this little small like parking garage and i just kept walking around and it being like I finally feel like I'm getting help for my mental stuff and like I'm in a good place. I really and physically just now doing stuff. 
this could go either yeah. two ways for me. This could be really helpful or really, really harmful. For what, and I've never seen the show before. Yeah. Just what I'm hearing. And then I saw like a few clips of the one that the, the original show that's in the UK. I'm like, this could maybe like make me go into like a tailspin back. Right. That. <laughs> that's a risky little game yes. you played there. High risk, high um, reward, I like to say. Yes. But I had a, multiple talks back and forth about mental health with that show of like what can I expect to feel what do protected I need to do? too mm -hmm. yeah that's good and talk to my psychiatrist a lot about why am I doing this show and um most of my life has been in some form competition and that this show is not a competition with anybody else it's for yourself and mm -hmm. one of the things I had to learn was how to advocate for myself and when, mm. when when was too much and that was really like my mindset of if this is too much or I think I'm going to be in any type of real real danger you have to be able to to pull to say pull do out. you think you were able I, to you... I do I think I was one of the most like mentally sh I was so proud of myself well, I was as you should I, be but not because I went like mentally strong yeah in a way that I never had been before. Yeah. Um, but I think I did a, more than probably most people because we didn't, nobody knew what to expect. I focused so much on my mental health and like it's incredible doing different types of meditation and hypnosis. And okay, what is it going to be like to be in pain? How am I going to deal with being in physical pain? Where do I go in those places? Hmm. And when do I say this is enough? And so that was mine and Dr. Amon's goal of like, this is not any type of competition, not even with yourself. It's a way to kind of tap into all the work that I've done mm -hmm. to be able to say when I can handle more and I know that I can keep going and when is the time to say, this, is, this has been enough. But for me, I really did the whole time feel like I could keep going that's so I there mean, were times I hated it and I thought well, yeah if this lasts much longer I don't know yeah but it always seemed like when I was hitting one of those points something would break it up or happen to I'm like okay I can keep going what was more mentally challenging doing special forces or the bachelorette oh bachelorette 1000 percent because it's the repercussions crazy? after like I'm still uh. dealing with things from that part of my life because first of all I was so innocent mm -hmm. so so innocent didn't understand the magnitude of the show didn't understand like the ramifications of that in my life and it wasn't just first of all you're doing it for like three months I think total oh, okay. and then obviously it's lasted this long I'm able to do what I'm doing same for you like it 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 can help be helpful right. in a lot of ways but there's a lot of ways that um in your life it takes a while to heal from where special forces for me is 10 days. Uh, you can do anything for 10 days. That's so I think. true. For me, I, I, I could do I mean, it I don't know if days. I could do what you did for 10 days, to be honest with you. I don't know. But like, and I think I'm mentally really strong and physically, eh, I'm OK. I think you. it just depends on what you need from that show also. I oh, think some people point. doing their best on the show is actually not finishing hmm. the show. Cause that's not what it's really about. Yeah, I, it's like, just so different from anything. You know, like there's dancing with there's pageant world, there's bachelor world, there's bachelorette, there's dancing with the stars, there's special forces. Like each one has done such different things to you and brought different things mm -hmm. into your life from it. Yeah, knowing all what you know now and being where you're at, do you wish like the world knowing everything? Would you wish you could go back and be that little innocent Hannah, or are you just like, no, this is where I'm supposed to be? I went, all those like wish shoulda couldas yeah. are so hard for me because I'm like I yeah I do think there are some things I wish I uh could still be that girl mm -hmm. I think but I do think I'm coming back to her and that's been uh, happening you know why because you're doing a lot of work for it yeah yeah I loved that part of me that was so okay with just like being herself mm -hmm. but like the reason I got there was like a show was the first time people were actually asking me how I felt about something. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a safe place for that type of growth to happen. So I love seeing that side of me when I watch some of the stuff because I'm like, oh, you're freaking funny. Yeah, you're just being yeah. yourself and don't you really don't care. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I love that because that's who I always was, but like it was the show that brought that out in me. So yeah. I'll always be thankful for it. But was that the safest place to be like, here I am world right. or with people who are trying to make a hit TV show and they did make a hit TV show with me, um, our season, but what that kind of did to how I like, trust fear, mm -hmm. how I view myself, how I'm maybe scared of showing up as myself now for other people. I think I've really like sheltered myself for a while. Yeah. And now I'm slowly starting to feel like, oh, like at this point, the people that are still here, they've chosen to. It's not just like I'm like in your face being pushed. Yes. You know, at that time, it's like you're everywhere. And there's some people like, will she go away? Yes. <laughs> I, that is one of the like greatest things about being removed from the show after a few years is you've kind of like you've kind of somehow brought together this community of people who want to be there. Yeah. And that's. You'll get that with podcasting. You'll get people aren't going to tune in to you for an hour if they don't want to support you. Shit on you. Yeah. And if they do, that's awesome. <laughs> and also, it's like, it's like, I'm worried about you and your obsession with me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In case you missed it, I got a news flash. Summer's here. And am I right to guess your wardrobe needs a little refresh? <laughs> Instead of a fast fashion haul, spend your money wisely on high quality essentials that will last beyond the season. And that's exactly why I shop at Quince. So Quince offers a range of must have items and all of their prices are 50 to 80% less than similar brands. And because Quince creates timeless classic styles that won't go out of fashion, you'll have them in your closet forever. I got a bunch of things from their website and probably will order more soon. But my fave right now is the 100% European linen tank in black. Okay, it's perfect cut off tee for summer or you can pair it with you know jacket a topper if you will in the winter and the super soft fleece pants and pullover hoodie are always my go-to for hanging out in you know, like a relaxing night it's just so cute so soft I mean it's called super soft for a reason and everything I got was priced so reasonably and it's such great quality I know you're wondering how they do it because I sure was. Quince partners directly with top factories to cut out the cost of the middleman. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium eco-friendly fabrics and finishes. So upgrade your closet this summer with Quince. Right now, go to quince.com slash vine to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's q-u-i-n-c-e.com slash vine for free shipping, 365 day returns. Quince dot com slash fine and when I say I'm crazy like I do say of it in like a I think crazy is kind of endearing and like fun like I crazy, crazy fun so when I say I'm crazy I'm like I was a crazy person today there's part of that that is entertaining right but I do need to be better about being like oh my gosh all these things are happening like I'm just I'm losing it I'm losing my marbles, which sometimes I am. <laughs> I feel that way every day. Like each day for me is so exciting because I'm like, am I going to lose my shit today? Where, where am I going to cry? Am like I going to laugh? Am I going to just be chill? Like who freaking knows? Same. Yeah. I wake up and I'm like, which part are we today? Yeah. I'm learning about parts in the, my therapy. Have you done that yet? No. Tell me more. I'm shocked I haven't. What parts are is there? Is it called like inner family Oh. systems or something okay and you yes, have the parts I've done something like this what name the parts how many are there well it depends on how many parts do you have uh like there's parts of yourself like maybe the part of me like the part that I'm allowing myself to access right now because there's some parts that are scarier than others yeah. you know is the part that's like Hannah why aren't you doing this why haven't you tried to do that okay you need to get up right now why are you still in bed? Come on, get it together. That mm -hmm. part. And that part of me serves as a purpose for like, it's your drive. It's your motivation. Yeah, and, and it serves a, another, like maybe the little girl in me that was always nervous and didn't know if she had support or something that this part of me came in to serve her mm. to make sure she was good yep. and had everything together yeah. so that part serves you at a certain time in your life but is that part serving me now mm. maybe not I love that because there are times where I'll 
I'll put an age onto what I'm thinking. So as like parts, I'll be like, oh, that's actually 16 year old Caitlin yes. talking and feeling this way. And she needs 38 year old Caitlin to like acknowledge her and yes. do that. So yeah, I understand. And so for me, like that first part that I, cause I've just started this first of all, so I don't know much. It's like EMDR and then this, I think it's inner family systems. Mm-hmm. I don't know, might be saying it wrong. Um, you find where that like, what the part is serving so it's not like i'm not it's not my six-year-old self it's this part of my brain of who i Mm -hmm. am now that is like treating and trying to take care and make sure that that six-year-old was okay yeah but i'm not six anymore right so instead it's just making me feel sad and crazy (laughs) (laughs) and crazy not always the fun way we're like i wish more people could dive that deep into parts and like yeah access their you know inner child and understand all these because we are all a little crazy we are all a little depressed we are all a little happy our brains are not meant to make us happy they're made for us to be comfortable and survive and we keep striving for happiness when that's something that like you can feel every once in a while you don't have to feel it all the time and sometimes i find that optimism like sweeps things under the rug of what you need to really dig into i don't do well with extreme optimistic people adam's the same way really me either we have done he's done really well of us being able to have these conversations and where we are in our relationship now versus before i think not that he was like infatuated but he just loved who i was right. and saw like how he like saw all the best parts of me which is awesome and he still right. does but sometimes I'm like no like i, I was a jerk Check me and yeah yeah like, I, I just was mean yeah and now he has no problem <laughs> But oh, so he's been he's able to kind of step into that. But we will have times where I'm like, maybe if it's talking about his family or some things that he's always stayed really optimistic about. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I can call it my family, but we also had very big, like obvious things that weren't working where for his family, like they seemingly and are the sweetest and yep. like get along. But you can't tell me that your parents didn't mess you up in some way. Totally. And so I will get upset with him in that, in that way. I'm like, you can't say you, there was, there's not one thing you would change about your f- parents' marriage. Yeah. At first he'd be like, no, I thought they were perfect. Uh, but now he can, he can like take that and we can, we work through it together. We have really great communication. I will say that's like probably our best, like we rock at that. That's amazing. Yeah. Like at first he couldn't fully get that I'm so open. Like I went and hung out with people I did not know yesterday and I came back. I'm like, they're definitely like, I'm so glad she's in therapy because she told me all about it. <laughs> that's me too. No, but I'm like, and he's like, well, you know, that's why people love you. You're it just is. an open book. It it really is. There's not a lot of people I find um, that are so willing to be such open books. And that's okay too, of course, if that's really truly who you are and it makes you happier to be a little bit more private. But for someone like you, you're helping so many people by being an open book because like even I'm an open book and even just hearing you talk about certain things makes me feel better. Yeah. And I know you. I feel like you do that too as well. But yeah, I feel like it's better to be that way and give those moments to make people feel like, they're accepted the way they are because this girl just went a little too far. Yeah. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I can, I can give something. Yeah. And I'm like, but I'm bum. Yeah. Your turn. Oh, I know. I'm like doing and a whole tap dance on a table if, and then be like, now you. But when they don't, it, I don't take that as a, I maybe step back. I add more. <laughs> You're like, don't worry. I got more to cover. <laughs> you got nothing. I got everything. Let's go. No, I, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> a freaking that feels passive <laughs> like when people say oh bless your heart i'm like oh. i thought i used to think that was like the nicest thing ever i didn't know that was i do like say a... it actually if i ever say that to you you mean it i mean it nicely okay. but i don't know m- many other people that do that so i have to yeah, always clarify passive. clarify that that when i'm like you tell me something really sad and i don't know what to say i might just like and i feel for you i will say like Oh my gosh, bless your heart. That must be so hard. And Aww. I'm not saying it sarcastically. I, like I can tell. Yeah. Like I genuinely mean like 
bless your sweet soul. You are going through it. I always say bless. Oh, bless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I was in the, I was getting a facial. If By the way, if you ever need a facial, go to Carrie Hayes. It's the best place. In yes. I have Nashville. to find all the people. I will tell you everything. Okay. I'll give you even my therapist if you want it. It sounds like you Actually, got a good got one, though. a good therapist here. I might need yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's in freaking L.A. from my Hoffman, so I have to do Zooms all the time. I was talking to a girl uh, that just last night when I went a little too far. She's like, <laughs> Hoffman will be great. <laughs> oh, my God. You have to go. I you think would, I would be really you would good for that it. because I've done a lot of the work. Yes. And now it's like the scary closet needs to all come open and all the things have to fall out. I've, I've been like picking does. one and two, three and four is out. I've Hoffman been. is a closet full of sh your shadows that you just let spill out. When I was hearing her talk about it, I mean, she also was like, you definitely should go. But I also was like, that sounds like something that's like right up my alley. Yeah. Because I'm okay with being uncomfortable. I could really see you getting a lot out of that experience. Uh, I mean, I know you don't talk about what happened there, but I do know the whole like negative, like when you have to tell somebody how they the upset transference. you, the transfer. Yeah, the transference. I'm so scared. I'm like, for me, there's going to be, I, in my head, I'm like, oh, there's going to be like 10 people in my line. I had people in my line. And, okay. it, and it kind of, I kind of was sad that there wasn't more. I was like, <laughs> wait, why am I not bothering anybody? Like, <laughs> But yeah it's, yeah, it's really intense. It's really deep, but it's. It's for people like you and I who are open books, comfortable being uncomfortable, and want to work on mm -hmm. themselves. Because I keep thinking, like, holy shit, how am I already 38? I want to know myself so well. All of the, like, all the incredible things about myself. I want to, like, dig into the things I hate about myself and learn to love them. And I yes. want to know exactly why I am the way I am and where I'm going and what I want. And I want to just, like, you know, know myself to my core. Same. Yeah. And I just had therapy. I, I, this is all I talk about. I feel that's like. That's why uh, you start, you're starting podcasts to make people, yeah, people feel but good. That's what my ther therapist and I talked about today of like, I, I think the scariest thing to me is being complacent with the way that things are. Yeah. And I never want to do that because I'm scared of something or what I might, what might hurt mm -hmm. to process um, I think that's worse. So I would yep. rather just go all in, know it might be scary, do it anyway. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I live my life. And that's when all the best things happen. I mean, you are living proof of all of that. You know, Same. like, yeah, <laughs> you go put yourself in an uncomfortable situation, something that you're afraid of doing or putting yourself out there and being like completely yourself for everyone to judge and see where it takes you. And it always takes you to the next level. It always cracks open inside something inside of you that makes you either realize like, wow, I'm so strong or this is what I need to work on yes. or here's what I can achieve. What can't I achieve? And I was actually going to ask you too. And we were talking about this when you saw this car accident and you froze and you screamed and like I was kind of shocked because I was like, I just picture you getting out there and like pulling out CPR on somebody and just being like, I need this, I need this. Do you like when opportunities present themselves in front of you or when you're going to start this podcast or when you're going to do whatever that it is next you're going to do when you did special forces, do you get scared? I am so scared. OK, so my mentality is always do, do it, it scared. scared. Is that you? Is that I how you live your life? I, I do it scared. OK, I'll be like crying. Mm hmm. But I'm still just like trying to take one step in front of the other. Yeah. When I, like I said, like when I know I'm in a bad place is if I can't take that step. Yeah. And that's when I'm more concerned. It's, I'm not concerned if I'm like scared and like moving forward. But when it like paralyzes me, mm -hmm. that is like the worst to yeah. me. Yeah. And I've had moments like that too. Like that maybe aren't talked about as, as much, but and also had seasons, honestly, with this podcast, like coming out has been so hard. The days after it was announced, the in-between of anything is when I'm my worst. Yeah. Yes. Same. Uh, because that you have no control yeah. of that. Yeah. And it's like kind of done, but not really. And then you're like, do I need to go back and do something else? Yes. Or do I even? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. how I've been feeling with the podcast. And I feel so much pressure um, because this is like the new thing that I've done and I have been successful in some of these other areas, but not something like a podcast. And I think I just, I'm like, what if it does fail? Cause failure happens. Yeah. I've had failure. Yeah. 
Um, but seemingly the things that I have done have to have done well. And it's like, I think you're waiting for I'm that waiting one for the thing, to, thing to drop. Yeah. And what's it going to be? That too. I'm like, snap out of it, Hannah. Like, it's well, like, no, that's, but that's so allowed. That's so valid for you to feel fear about something failing because you're like, at some point, something's it, not going to work. Gonna happen. I do the same thing all the time. But I mean, I almost got this tattooed on me. One of my girlfriends always said like the best two words that she says to herself even if it's a big deal little deal so what and i try and say that all the time. okay so what like people it's not like the world is gonna like three months later go oh remember that time like but i think that i so do i i'm like oh i'm gonna meet that person and they're thinking of that bad thing i did or that failure every time and it's like no nobody they never are you need to read people are probably so sick of me saying this book but you need to read the mountain that is you i always i love to read fiction and i love to listen to audiobooks or um self-help books mm-hmm. the mountain that is you it's really good audio Ugh. or audible it's everything okay it's everything and it talks about how nobody cares as much as you think they do you're the person they're probably caring more about what they failed at and what they're doing and it's this whole and system it's always that a we've projection got. if it is always anything. always and and let me remind you that your podcast is not gonna fail <laughs> it's not gonna fail like yeah. if it's something that you love doing mm-hmm. and you're talking about things that are going to really help you help other people and you enjoy doing it that's not a fail no matter how many downloads or not yeah you know what i mean like that so what would you consider a fail like maybe not even podcast whatever you're thinking like what would you consider a fail uh so with the podcast i talk about this on my first episode why i'm scared of failure why with this is there's no um what i think is unique about a podcast is there's no filtering of I can't, I'll never start the podcast if I show up when I feel like, okay, I know how to do this. Mm-hmm. You have to learn. Yeah. The only way to learn and to become a better podcaster is to interview people and to podcast. Yeah. So what am I going to do? Like go under some like alias and start a podcast nobody will actually listen to right. so I can feel comfortable right. to show up because I'm scared of what the People want the mess from you. Yeah, but I also have tr- troubles um, finishing one sentence and going on to the next. And that's sometimes difficult to listen to. Hi, I have trouble not repeating myself every single week and people call me out for it all the time. Cause if I've been podcasting for six years and so I repeat stories or I, I do the same, like I have same little quirks that I do all the time. And it's just, it is what it is. That's it. And you're also for people that do that. It's like, okay, well not every podcast is just for you. Right. Some people have started your podcast for the first time and want to hear those stories. Right. It's true. That's yeah, true. You're always you're that's a good it's bringing point. somebody else in that maybe needs to hear that story right then. Yeah. Sorry, I feel like I interrupted you. You were saying on your first episode you talked about I what just was talk it? about oh, my fear of doing this mm. because it's the only way I could really like start it and I didn't want to f- pretend like I was coming in and feeling like super confident. Yeah. Cuz I'm t- I'm not. Yeah. I do not feel super confident in being a podcaster just yet and that's okay totally because you've never done it because i've never done it before yeah. <laughs> yeah. but that is hard for me yeah that people will tell me that all the time are like the so what thing to ask myself i hate that even though i know it's good i, do I hate when people will say so what i'm like so what what do you mean me too They're that's like, why i keep trying to <laughs> drill it in because i'm like just so, so what? what's the third and they'll like go through so what's the worst thing that could happen i'm like i just want to do this i yeah. know <laughs> <laughs> you're like i can tell you exactly what the worst case scenario would, what would it be and it would be bad and it was it's bad for me and they're yeah. like but do you still have your yes i still have my health i still have yeah. my family but it's still bad yeah. okay <laughs> i know what you mean i'm and i think we're similar where if you're going to do something you want to be the best at it and do it fully. I'm the same way. I even like years ago when other people started doing podcasts, I kept being like, nah, no. And now I'm just like, I want to like help people who yeah. come on and do podcasting because now I know what that feels like. And there is room for so many other podcasters. I feel that same. I'm like, there's so many people out doing this. Why do I think I should do this? And are all people going to roll their eyes and be like another podcast? Yes, there's probably some people rolling their eyes. Of course. Of course. But then I think Glennon Doyle talks about this, or I think it's like, or maybe it's somebody else. It's either Brene Brown or Glennon Doyle. It's either Brene (laughs) or Glennon about like, 
but somebody hasn't heard it from you and there are some yeah. people that are going to resonate more with you. It's true. And we could be talking about the same thing and some people might resonate more with yep. the story that I have. Yeah. But we all have a story to tell and um, our voice, like, why would I like, sh- oh, there's so many, so like, I shouldn't be heard. That's... No, that's crazy town. That's crazy because... town, but I mean, I still like struggled with that about even starting it. It's like, what do I have to say? I mean, I've had a few breakdowns about this podcast of just like... Who am I to think that I can do this? And then especially being better tomorrow is I want it to be helpful. That's always the goal is that like it's optimistic. It's never shit talking. But I also want it to be fun. Yeah. Well, you're a real person. You aren't. It's not going to be optimistic all the time. No. Because you're going to have certain feelings some days. One of the hardest parts about podcasting is being in like a rock ball mo- bottom moment and having to work. But that is an opportunity to create that vulnerability with somebody else and just talk about that and say how you're feeling. Mm-hmm. And maybe they have some something that could resonate with you that's going to hit so many ear holes and resonate with so many people out there. And they might not get that from the podcast they listen to every week. And, yeah. you know, like that you might get more listeners one week and not as many the next. And, you know, it's all about what you're going through in your life and it's really cool to have that community go through it with you yeah like I've gone through so much crap in my life yeah. and this podcast community has just been like I'm here for it. like do you struggle like coming yes. from <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. yes do you struggle with um because I've done like a lot of research I'll go like down rabbit holes of like people why I'm like interested in this certain podcast and what they do do you struggle with okay there are some people that want to listen to certain things for you to talk about but you might have outgrown that or yeah. want to talk about something different but then you see your numbers and you're like oh but people really like this I struggle with that all the time with okay. bachelor stuff yeah that was kind of yes or pop like for me it's like when I started my podcast I was like oh I just want it to be mental health but I'm like no like you have to talk about pop culture in some way mm-hmm. I can still do it in a positive way where I'm not like shitting on whatever so-and-so did right and making it worse for their it's not mental like, health yeah it's not like hot off the press and harry styles and this person and you're yes. just like ew that's He's how so is he gross. making out with yeah this, this is so great like you don't have to do that yeah you could be like oh my gosh did you hear this so like i wonder what they're thinking like there's yes. so many and that's just who you are though you'll naturally do that mm-hmm. and you can't you know pigeonhole yourself into one topic because naturally other topics are going to come up yes but i do that same thing with um you know obviously my numbers go up with a like if I'm recapping The Bachelor or having people on from the current season and I'm just like I I like it because I love giving people an opportunity to have their own voice on my Mm -hmm. podcast because they're put in a box themselves on edited television where I'm like speak your truth even though there's you know still under contract but they're able to at least have a voice and I love hearing other people's side of things like one of my favorite things is when I have a guest on that people maybe weren't so sure of and then after they go oh wow I after that I actually respect them and I like that yeah it was nice to hear it coming from them so it is cool yeah I have kind of toyed with I feel like I have stayed a lot out of bachelor world but well that's probably for your own mental health because it brings up stuff and it's I mean maybe it's not so fresh anymore but it was Mm -hmm. so and now I feel like I'm more like I'm watching charity season right now I'm literally obsessed with her I'm obsessed with her I am obsessed with her I know I know and think she's just so awesome and I love she's it's like refreshing Mm -hmm. I love that she's like fully herself yeah and it does yeah it seems so easy yes like she it's and you know why because she knows herself she is brilliant she does, yes. and she's done the work and she knows herself so well. And she knows exactly what she's looking for and she's so easy to watch. But it's also like she has this innocence about her that's beautiful. Yeah, she's so to pure. Watch. She's so pure. Yeah. I think that's why some people, like, I see that. I don't be like, oh, I see her, like, well, no. I see a part of myself. You but can. I saw, like, when I watch her, I'm like, oh, I would do something, like, really goofy like that. Yeah. It's like so innocent and pure. But she's done the work that a 24 year old, I me mean, at 24 as a bachelorette, did not do i mean which i can't even imagine now i remember people like being upset that i was so young as bachelor and i'm like i know what i want because yes. <laughs> all my friends were married like yeah. legit all my friends i had seven of my good friends got married right after college yeah and i was in a serious relationship yeah. and i thought that was going to be for me right so i'm like what do these people know they don't know me and now I'm like, ah. <laughs> hey, like 24 is pretty young. 24 is pretty young to be dating 
on a television show <laughs> to in get front married. Of, yeah. 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 It's like different than just dating in your hometown the, and maybe being ready. It's such a weird experiment almost. Yeah. I forget about Jed all the time. Have you ran into Jed in Nashville now that you live here? No, but one of my best friends was his flight attendant the other day. Stop. And it was so funny because she sent me, oh my gosh, guess who's on my flight? And I was just like, that is hilarious. But no, I have not ran into him. Yeah. But I genuinely mean this. Like, I have no ill will for him. I'm so happy. Like, I, I heard he's, like, engaged. Yeah. Like, I'm good for him. Yeah. And that I, was such a small little sliver of something in your like, life. Like, I wonder that... if he still feels the same way. I was like, oh, yeah. Like, I think I one time got engaged. Like, I... <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, I'm sure afterwards was tra traumatic for both of us. And, like, he probably doesn't – he probably doesn't always forget, like, the backlash. But that we were engaged right. does not feel real. And but, I don't even know – like, I don't know him. It doesn't count. Like, I don't know him. No. No. You. I mean, it's – it all have. It, it was all just such a whirlwind for you, mm -hmm. and then you went right into dancing, and then... I mean, it'll never not be yeah, weird. Yeah, it'll always be weird. I mean, there's just... My life a, is just a reality TV show. You know what? At all times. If, would you do reality TV again? What if it was like the life of Hannah? Would you do it? I've thought about this. Because I have an I idea to pitch to you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you after when we're off the record. Um, yeah, I think I would. I think I'm in a good, if it had boundaries and I had control. Yes, exactly. That's the thing. You've gone through so much where you didn't have control and everything has worked for you, whether it looks, feels, is like it, it really has worked out yeah. for you in the long run to get, like, you're the most solid you've ever been. Mm -hmm. You've, you, you are so successful in everything you've done. You've built this life and career and book, and now you're starting this important conversation with podcasting. And so now, if you could now move forward into a show where you had creative control, Love got it. executive producer credits, and... Sign me up. Sign me up. No, and, like, I... Every time I do interviews or get, like, um, opportunities to host or read off a teleprompter, I'm like... This is what I'm like. That is what I'm the most happy. Yeah, same. So I like being on TV. Yeah, uh, I like being myself on TV. Yeah, uh, I think vulnerability is a superpower, like Brene Brown says. Hundred percent. And I think you have that. I have that. Yep. Not everyone can do that, and it's a gift if yeah. used correctly. Yeah. And so, I want to do things that make me happy, but not all reality TV shows would make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's why podcasting is a good like yeah you know you get to you can put it on youtube it's like your own little tv show and i want you to tell everybody what they're going to take away from your podcast at the end of each episode like what are they going to feel i want people when they listen to better tomorrow to just like when they to feel better than when they hit play that is the the main goal is that it is something that is additive to your day they're so much out there so, so much that's so competitive out there mm -hmm. to to listen to and to catch your attention and if you choose to spend your time with me I want it to be something that is filling your cup up mm -hmm. and putting you in a good space headspace mood to go about your day yeah that is like the main goal regardless of who we're talking who's who we're talking about what we're talking about if it doesn't make you feel better after then then i d wasn't successful at better tomorrow yeah right like, cuz that so is the point that's, that is the whole <laughs> yeah. the whole goal is to just like feel a little bit better than you did the day before yeah. or you know a few moments before listening to it and that doesn't mean we won't have like hard conversations oh no that's those are all or, the things you just said is exactly how I want people to feel with this podcast. And we yeah. have some hard conversations. We laugh. We cry. And laugh. And be fun. Yeah. That's also one of the things that when I hear, like, my podcast, I'm like, no, we're still going to have fun. Yeah. I'm not, like, <laughs> a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're, it's not going to be serious. I'm going to be like, I'm f up. Please yeah. help me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, totally. <laughs> and then having those conversations that hopefully will help me and other people listening. Yeah. Uh, I don't ever want the podcast. I think you do this very well. Like there's some authority cause it's your podcast, but you don't act like you have it all, all the answers figured out. Oh, hell no. And that it, like, if somebody's coming in thinking that like, I'm going to be able to tell them how to do life, like 
please don't. <laughs> no, that's why you have guests on. You have experts in certain things yes. to come on and share their knowledge with you, with everybody. Yeah. But I do think I've had some very unique experiences where I've gained a lot of wisdom mm. and been very humbled and learned and lost and have grown and have fallen to rock bottom in such this con condensed time that it's almost a disservice not to be able to talk about that yeah. because if it can help somebody that's maybe in one of those situations where maybe I went the wrong way or went the right way for them to feel like not alone in that moment of struggle mm -hmm. and to maybe p be able to use the wisdom that I've gained to to point them in a direction to also go find somebody else to help them more. Yeah. Then that's that is the goal of the, the I'm podcast. excited for you. I am too. I'm getting so much more excited. I think there's like first starts excited, then it gets like nervous, scared, and now I'm I'm going back into oh, we're doing the thing. That means you're doing the right thing. That means you're supposed to be doing this. If you have all of those feelings, that's great i think so yeah i hope so well i can't wait it comes out actually the day after we release this episode oh perfect so good timing yes everybody go listen tomorrow and and i just want to thank you for like supporting me in this of course. the vinos like that is like my goal like what you've created here is so you cool yeah. like a, the community that you have that supported you in everything but that takes a a leader and somebody that's, that's been vulnerable nice. to be able to rally people together. So I just want to like tell you that you're doing really great and you're inspiring somebody like me Aww. to to want to be like that and to emulate that. And that's like the best. See, that's, that's what, what I want to have. To that's somebody what one this day. shit is all about. I hate when people are. I am so competitive. I am so competitive, but I want to be able to do it in a way where I empower other people. I'm competitive with myself and wanting to always be better in my own lane and and like inspire and encourage others to be doing what they want to do and like help me help you. How can I help you with this? I've I've been doing this for 6 years. Mm -hmm. How can I help you with anything that you need? And yeah, it's just I'm just in a place where I'm like I remember talking to Kelty Knight and she was like Honestly, Caitlin, thank you for having me on this podcast to promote my show. She was like, you'd, you'd be like mind blown in L.A. to know how many people don't want to support your dreams and, you know, just feel. And I was like, what? That I think moving to Nashville has been that yeah. click for me mm -hmm. and being able to be around people like you and other people that I've just met that genuinely are, first of all, are so successful, mm -hmm. are not any less successful than somebody else in Los Angeles there um but are way more willing to help and there's a difference of being like jealous and being inspired and I've had to learn in my brain sometimes I I'm pretty self-aware I'll say like I'm jealous of somebody oh 100 percent yeah I do that um too. I now I'm like no no I'm actually like jealousy would be me thinking like I can't have what they have I can have what she has totally I'm inspired by that. Yeah. And I yes. want to be around her, not because I want to take something away from her, but I want to level up. And I have like really genuinely felt that. And anytime I don't feel that, I'm like, I talk it out. I'm like, why am I feeling jealous? And, and I can like make it positive again. The Mountain That Is You, that book talks about what jealousy actually is. And it's such an inviting book to figure out like what that might be. Like what your what internally that means. If you're mm -hmm. feeling jealousy, that means you probably want what somebody else has. Like it's 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 very simple and it yes. breaks it down into what these feelings are. And so jealousy, you can choose to to use it as jealousy or inspiration, mm -hmm. like you just said. So yeah. I really think you need this book. I for some reason I thought you told me about no, it. No, but I'm you told me about it. a different book. Um, but it was more faith based. But I, oh, I yeah. have it written the, down. Um, ruthless elimination of her. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one. That's the okay. one I told you about. I have that one written so down. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm still. Um, in that case, in a lot of ways, but I, I'm <laughs> very proud of myself for being able to actually now verbalize how yeah. I feel and to be able to have these conversations and now be able to do it in a podcast of like, oh no, I was totally feeling jealous. Yeah. But this is why. And now I'm using that as a motivator. Yeah. And I'm actually super inspired. Yeah. And how am I going to do these things? Like, 
that's a journey that I'm inviting other people to go on with me. Yeah. And everybody could go on that journey. It's yeah, literally everybody for everybody. Everybody probably should. Everybody should go on that journey. And if you don't think that, this podcast is even more for yeah. you. <laughs> you go to our therapist Please, and they'll yeah, set you we straight. Need to give you, we need to get you some therapist, uh, <laughs> do some acupuncture, Reiki, whatever's for you. Yeah, just dip your toe and then in 10 years go to Hoffman. Yes. <laughs> People are going to be like, Caitlin, you talked about Hoffman again. I actually had a, so somebody, when you go to Hoffman, um, you have a chance to write anybody a letter who's been there in the past if you mm -hmm. know that they have been there. So obviously I'm very open with my Hoffman journey. And so I got a letter the other day from a girl who wow. went and she went because I would talked about it. Wow, that is... And the letter made me sob. And we're like, now we're just like friends because we have the Hoffman bond. And she was like, yeah, I went because of you and it's changed my whole life. And I was like, Ugh. That's I'm so, so happy. special. So yeah, it's really, really cool. And you are special. And I really am glad you were able to come here and talk to me today. No, I was so excited. I was like, <laughs> perfect. Hanging pod. I'm Caitlin Bristow. I'll see you next Tuesday. See you next